This introduction, which I'm going to explain, is the key to every scenario about chronic disease and compliance with medication. All right? Again, this is a very popular, very common basis uh, uh, um, subject. So uh, please um, just concentrate with me what I'm going to say, okay? First of all, Okay, if you have any questions while I am explaining, please type it in the message bar or in the chat bar, and I will give you time to ask questions. So I'm going to start with the explanation, and then we will practice the scenario, okay? So first of all, uh, before we start, could you please confirm to me if you can see, hear me properly and see the shared screen. I shared a screen with you, so please confirm to me if you are able to see me, uh, to see the, the screen and hear me. Anyone in the chat box, please inbox me. Okay, thank you very much. So to start, uh, I am Dr. Anada and uh, I've been um, instructing uh, ethics and communication skills for quite a while and uh, uh, I've been having s a special interest in this field in all the subject um, in all the syllabus my curriculum which I provide to you in the course uh, it was actually um, from uh, the hot paces materials with updated materials and then also a consultant in the UK have been uh, uh, revising and, uh, and supervising uh, this, the, the, the work uh, which I have put into this uh, uh, curriculum. Okay, so um, just to provide you with the, the accurate knowledge and the accurate information you need to grab to uh, tackle PACE's station for. My aim for you is to um, pass the station and prepare for it with your own mindset. My aim for you is I know that many uh, overseas candidates, they didn't pre we, we didn't um, receive basic um, medical education in the medical schools in communication and especially in UK ethics. So now to pass paces, then you have to grab the subject from the basics and also build on with the advanced knowledge you need to uh, uh, provide in your exam station. So that's why in the course, I will take you back to the basics. I'll take you back to build your knowledge and communication skills, the things you didn't, you, you, which was not, were not taught, taught to, uh, to you in the medical school, plus uh, all the uh, ethical and legal aspects for the PACES level, which you need to know to uh, pass the station, okay? Uh, we have so many scenarios in the course, and uh, um, one of these is, for example, our topic. This lecture is taken from my, uh, from my course uh, uh, lecture, so I wanted to share it with you tonight because it's a very important subject. So let's start now. Non-compliance with medication. Okay, again, it could be, I will give you an example about non-compliance with medication, but in fact, it could be non-compliance with medication, it could be non-compliance with any given management to the patient, like for example, physiotherapy. You advise the patient to have physiotherapy, and now you discover that in follow-up visit that the patient did actually not receive, he wasn't going to his physiotherapy sessions, for example. So that's also an example of non-compliance. So you will use the same approach non-compliance with medications, non-compliance with, with, with whatever, okay? Management plan, the patient is not compliant with it. Usually it's about medications, drugs, okay? But this is how you deal with it, okay? First of all, I wanted to say a couple of words about non-compliance with medications. Uh, there are some barriers to patients' adherence to medications in general. And these include either from the patient's side, to patient-related factors like memory problems, they are forgetting to take their drugs, or depression, or poor eyesight. Maybe they are embarrassed from taking treatment in public, or reluctance to share their diagnosis with their family, or variable perception of the severity of their illness, etc. So what you need to do when you sit with the surrogate and ask them about their compliance, I'll show you how, what exactly you need to say and how to approach them, okay? Because the way how you say it, 
the way how you communicate with the surrogate, this is what the examiners are concentrating on. How you do it and what you, what you say and what you do. It's very important um, to, to show how you do it. Because remember, you will be marked for showing empathy. You will be marked for uh, uh, your welfare, expression of welfare, okay, with the patient. So these are very important things that you need to take into account. All right. So first of all, you have to ask the patient, why are they not taking their medications? Maybe they have any of these problems. So as, long, as soon as you know, you spot the problem and you fix it, like for example, he has poor eyesight, then we can solve that problem, okay? If he's depressed, okay, we can work on that too. If he is having any memory problems, then we can use some gadgets, gadgets to remind him uh, with his medication appointments. Okay, uh, if he's embarrassed from taking treatment in public, we can give him good counseling and help him with that. Okay, uh, he's not wanting to share the diagnosis with the family. For example, we ask them if they have any problems with telling the family about the diagnosis. We can help them doing that if they are okay with that. Okay, uh, maybe they are not very much aware of the, the severity of, or seriousness of their illness. Okay, patient, for example, with coronary heart disease and he's not taking his medications, maybe he doesn't realize how important that is. And maybe he's not re he, he doesn't realize uh, the risks which he is putting himself in, into. So it's very important to counsel the patient, to explain the seriousness of his disease, okay? Uh, the complications, possible complications, which, which are going to happen if he didn't take his medications, and the benefits of taking these drugs. And if there is any problem, he's facing with that, we'll have to work on it because that's possibly his concern. I mean, even if he didn't mention it, you have to ask why. That's why we have to persuade him to ask him why maybe he, he might not be taking his drugs because I'm here to help you, okay? This is what you have to say to the patient. I'll show you in the, in the coming slide. So these are examples about patient-related factors which may affect the compliance of the patient. The second thing is it could be medication-related factors, okay? Polypharmacy. This patient with, the, with a, a chronic uh, um, comorbid conditions and he's taking 10 to 12 pills a day, okay, that's polypharmacy and maybe that's the reason why he's not um, taking his drugs. Uh, so we can solve that, for example, by providing combination pills that will help uh, to improve the compliance by any means, okay? Multiple daily regimes, for example. Okay, again, compliance of the medications because of, uh, uh, let, let's say, for example, a patient who's taking uh, a pill three times a day is not like uh, a patient who is being treated for the same medical condition with a single tablet, long-acting tablet. So it's also uh, something that we can adjust uh, in order to encourage the patient to take his drugs. Multiple daily regimes, again, uh, drug-drug interactions. Maybe um, he's taking uh, multiple drugs and they are interacting together and they are affecting the patient um, in a certain way. Also, media reports about safety of some drugs. Maybe a patient may present to you at the clinic and he says that, um, well, doctor, I heard in the news today that this drug may cause cancer. So I just stop it, stop taking it. I'm terrified. I've been taking this drug for many years. Now I discovered that it could can cause cancer or vision, um, loss of vision or um, whatever, okay? Diabetes or so here you have to explain to the patient side effects of this drug and just to sort out and clarify these side effects for him. Maybe he's over exaggerating the side effects. Maybe he's, okay, so you know, here comes the importance of communicating with the patient asking them why they are feeling this way, okay, and try to solve the problem. Now, the third factor could be clinician-related factors, okay, and this is from the doctor's uh, side, okay, failure to educate the patient about the importance of their medication and potential side effects of each uh, may lead to the patient's underestimation of his medical condition, and um, he, he's not going to be very compliant with the drugs, okay. Let's say, for example, that the patient who is uh, diabetic and he doesn't know uh, how important it is uh, to take insulin, for example, and the doctor didn't even pay attention to that and he, the doctor did not communicate the uh, issue with the patient, didn't uh, explain the importance of taking the drugs to control his diabetes, and the result was that the patient is not taking his drugs and that 
affects his life and it will expose him to serious side effects. Okay, so please, again, it's very important that you communicate with the patient. So however, in order to improve the compliance, you have to educate the patient. Involving the family members in the discussion is all, could be very helpful. Of course, after the patient's consent, you have to obtain the patient's consent because there is an issue of confidentiality here to, to speak to the family. If they agree, so involving family members could be very helpful, especially if they have memory problems or sight problems or whatever, okay? They can be very helpful. And giving contact details to the member of the medical team in case of any queries can also be very helpful. So these are means of improving the patient's uh, uh, compliance, all right? Now there are very important questions. These four questions which you see, one, two, three, four in red, okay? These are the cornerstones of non-compliance scenarios. You can use it whenever there is an issue of non-compliance in the station court, okay? Uh, I will give example scenarios, but in the exam, it's not, uh, uh, I mean, we don't know what's, what, what scenarios will come to us in the exam, all right? But we know the approach. So whenever you have an issue of non-compliance, you can apply it to the non-compliance scenarios. These are the four words the or four points the examiner is waiting for you to say, okay? So number one, again, you have to explore the reasons for non-compliance. Ask them why. And always remember, the UK, uh, UK practice between the doctor-patient relationship is patient-centered approach, which means that we involve the patient in everything, okay? We, we respect the patient's autonomy. We involve the patient's opinion in deciding uh, how he wants to be treated, his management plans, his investigation. He has the right to know everything, okay? So that's why it's a good idea in communication stations to reflect back the issue to the patient. Let's say that a patient came to you and he was non-compliant with his medications. So because you need to talk to him, the conversation has to be mutual between you and the patient. You're not in the clinic, you're not in the exam station just to lecture and the patient is or the surrogate is sitting there and just to listen to what you're saying. No, it's communication station. So in order to make the conversation mutual, Okay, in order to um, uh, avoid letting the patient surprising you, okay, you can simply reflect the question back to the patient. Patients say that I am not taking my medication, always ask why. Let's say a patient presented to the clinic and he was asking for a genetic testing, ask them why they are asking for a genetic, a genetic testing. Let's say a patient was refusing to accept a certain procedure, ask why, okay? patient was asking you for a certain procedure, let's say a patient came to you with a functional disorder, let's say, for example, um, chronic fatigue syndrome, or let's say, okay, a, a irritable bowel syndrome, and the patient with IBS was asking you, that was the concern of the surrogate, he asked you, doctor, I want to have a colonoscopy. So we are asking why he's asking for a colonoscopy, okay? So always ask why. So, and while you do that, Try to do it without a direct confrontation with the patient, which means you have to understand, um, for example, you, this is an example how you can say it. Well, I understand the treatment needs to be taken many times a day. Could that be the reason? Or um, then ask a direct question if there are any problems, if they face any problems, if they face any side effect of the drug. So there must be a, a reason why you're not taking your drugs. Would you please share that with me? Me and my team, we are here today to help you, okay? So this is a way, and please pay attention to your tone of voice when you communicate with the patient, okay? Some example, uh, problem examples of some problems could be taste, difficulty swallowing, side effects, okay? Number two, so number one, ask why here. Number two, establish that they understand the implication of their diagnosis. So this is one, one of the things you have to ask the surrogate. Do they understand, what do you understand about your disease or your diagnosis? Do you have an idea? Could you please tell me what you have been told about your medical problems so far? And let them speak, okay? When they finish, continue by explaining what they haven't said, for example. Okay, would you mind if I uh, explain further to you? Yeah, okay. Well, um, you have a medical condition which is called TB. And uh, TB is an infection 
which is caused by a certain bug and it affects your um, lungs and causes so and so and it's important that you have to be treated because uh, although TB is a curable medical disease condition, totally curable disease, but if it's not treated, unfortunately, it can cause death, it can be fatal. So the good news is that we can completely cure it. So here, establish and understand the implication of their treatment. Okay, it's important that they are treated because it's curable and we can eradicate the disease. And what's gonna happen if they didn't take the, 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 the treatment? Okay, so here what's the benefits of treatment and the consequences if they don't take it. I just gave you the TB as an example. Okay, you can apply it to any chronic disease which needs a treatment. Okay, it could be uh, rheumatoid arthritis, for example. Ask them why they are not taking steroids, their steroids or methotrexate. Okay, and assess the reason. Maybe the methotrexate is causing some sort of gastric pain or gastritis or whatever. Maybe the steroids are causing some weight gain or whatever, okay? And then establish and understand the implication of their diagnosis. Do they, do they understand what rheumatoid arthritis is? Okay, let them say what they know about it and then you explain the diagnosis in brief. Remember, you don't have to do it in very much detail because there is another task which you may get, which is to explain the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis and deal with any related problems. It could be your task is to explain diagnosis. I, I give that in, an, in, a, in a separate lecture. Okay, how in the details, very minute details, how to explain the diagnosis and how it should be done in the paces, okay? But now it's not our task today. Our task is to deal with non-compliance, okay? So I'm going just to talk about non-compliance. It could come along with explain the diagnosis of a given disease uh, or it could be along with um, dealing with a patient uh, who has a chronic disease. I'll show you in a few minutes how that's uh, done, okay? Then establish the understanding implication of the importance to take these treatment, treatments, okay? After that, what the benefits of the treatment, you have to explain what these benefits are, okay? And the consequences if they not, not, do not take these medications, okay? So again, uh, if you uh, attended my previous live lecture, I showed you a block. This is, I, I have designed this block. I collected uh, all these steps and uh, guidelines or the key steps uh, and made this approach for the course. Uh, it's collected from many uh, different um, uh, important cases, uh, resources, okay? And just collected it into this slide. This slide uh, is gathering uh, the most important things that you need to cover in your station, okay? Although, some details may be variable from scenario to scenario according to the given disease and the given related tasks and the given ethical or legal issues in that scenario. But whenever you're dealing with a patient who has a chronic disease, okay, and there is an issue of non-compliance in the scenario, okay, so these are the guidelines or the steps you, you, you're going to use. In the previous lecture, I explained a scenario, okay, uh, where um, uh, there was an issue of uh, HIV testing in a patient who uh, lost capacity, okay? And uh, I showed you one of the blocks, and this is the block for today's lecture, specific for today's uh, lecture. So as you can see, the left green column is the interview structure. The interview structure is the same for, let's say, 99% of communication stations, okay? The same steps. You have to use it because it will show that you are professional. Okay, you are approaching the, the station in a professional way. You started with an introduction, you uh, followed your discussion in your interview in a very professional way, and also you considered asking about the concern, you, can, you, you included the welfare, you included all the important things. This is just to make sure that you don't miss or forget any step. That's why I want you to see and memorize this block and follow it step by step, okay? It's very, very helpful in the exam day. You'll be under tremendous stress. There's so limited time, okay? And I know the stress of the exam and the examiners are sitting there and they are listening and waiting for what you're going to say. So when you have such a block to follow, it's gonna help you a lot. It's gonna make you relaxed and concentrating more on the content of that task card. 
All right. So this interview structure, you will learn it and use it by heart throughout the uh, communication um, uh, course. Okay. We will repeat it over and over again, and uh, the court of the candidates, uh, our candidates will use it to practice our scenario. So you're, it's going to be a habit. Okay, you, you see that it's full of details right now. Okay, but it's gonna be just, everything's going to be turned into action. Okay, so first of all, you have to introduce your uh, uh, um, um, interview by greeting the patient, confirm the patient's ID, introduce yourself in your role. You have to follow them step by step because you will be marked for being professional, a professional communicator in the, uh, uh, um, the um, marking sheet, okay? Then you have to establish rapport, which means that, first of all, we ask the patient how he's doing, um, okay, just to break the ice between you and the patient. Then you set the agenda. Setting the agenda means that you explain to the patient why you are here today, the reason for this meeting, okay? And then, so you don't ask the patient, do you know why we are here today? It should come from you, okay? Tell the patient that we are here, oh, well, Mr. X, we are here today uh, to discuss the results of your investigation. Uh, investigations, is that okay with you? Okay, did you notice how my tone of voice changed? So we have to do it, okay? That will come along with practicing, all right? <clears throat> then do your task. Again, do your task is the only variable step in, in all the blocks uh, in the communication because it will vary from task to task. The green and steps in green are the same, whatever your task was. Was it breaking bad news or explaining a diagnosis or a chronic illness or whatever? Okay, so we are going to use these steps. They are common in most 99% of the communication scenarios. This is to ease the whole thing for you, okay? To give you a backbone to follow, uh, that will help you a lot when you study and prepare for paces. Okay, so this is the interview structure which you, you will use for most or <clears throat> nearly all communication stations. But the difference is here when you do your task. So you introduce the introduction by these steps, assess the understanding, what do they know about their diagnosis so far? Okay, remember, usually the issue of non-compliance is included in a scenario where the patient has a chronic disease because these patients need to take treatments. These, they, they need to take drugs, they, okay? So usually there is a combination between non-compliance issue in a chronic illness scenario. This is a very common example, okay? So here, do your task, which means, first of all, assess any updates. The patient is now, he came to you, for example, in the clinic and he had for a follow-up visit, so you have to assess any updates in the patient's disease. <clears throat> or uh, any updates, uh, any new symptoms or signs because of the disease itself or because of the side effects of drugs, of course, okay? Then assess complications from the disease or drugs if present. Let's say, for example, a patient with a congestive heart failure and he is on uh, um, treatments, he's taking medications, supposed to take medications, and now he came to you uh, in a follow-up visit. Okay, so when you meet the patient, as you do in the daily life, okay, in the OPD clinics, you ask the patient, of course, how he's feeling today, well, any new uh, events from the last visit, then you ask him about any new symptoms. He's a patient with heart failure, so you have to ask him, D is he experiencing any d deterioration in dyspnea or improved, his dyspnea has improved, is there any ankle swelling, any problems, any, you, you see, and plus that, you have to ask if they have any complications from the drugs. Let's say they are taking amiodarone, for example, for arrhythmia. Okay, so here you have to ask if there are any side effects from the arrhythmia, any photosensitivity. Uh, did he notice any uh, difficulty breathing? Um, did he notice any uh, yellowish discoloration in his eyes, for example? All right, just to assess the side effects of amiodarone. So these are just examples. Then assess the compliance with medication and which drug they take. And remember, these are the steps how to ask and assess compliance, okay? Ask them if they are taking their drugs. Do they know what drugs they are taking? Do you know what drugs you are taking? Yes, doctor, I'm taking lisinopril, and I'm taking Lasix, and I'm taking um, uh, Bisoprolol. All right, um, are you taking them all as prescribed? Well, sometimes I take um, the 
the, yeah, I take the bisoprolol and I take the Lasix, but sometimes I just forget about the lisinopril. Okay, okay, um, could you tell me why? Uh, is there any reason why you, are for, you, you don't take the lisinopril or just because you're forgetting to take it? And then let them speak, okay? So here, okay, uh, would you please um, tell me what you have been told so far about um, your disease? Uh, did anyone explain to you about it? Yes, doctor. Uh, okay, could you tell me what you know? Let them speak. And then if there are missing uh, information, just explain the diagnosis here. Establish and understand the implication of their diagnosis. Establish and understand the implication of their treatment. Well, the sinopril is very important because your heart needs it. It will uh, maintain your heart uh, size and um, uh, the structure of the uh, heart muscle. And remember, you have a pencil and you have a piece of paper in front of you. So uh, try to get use of that. That will impress the examiners, okay? When you explain anything to the patient and you can draw it, just use it, okay? That will be very nice, okay? So again, that they understand the implication of their diagnosis, the importance of the Zinopril, why he needs to take it, and also what's the benefits of the treatment. Maybe he says that I cannot take it because I've read in a magazine that it caused cough, and recently I've been coughing, started to cough, so that's why I stopped it. Well, um, okay, uh, that's a possible side effect of the Zinopril, and uh, I'm glad that you told me, uh, but we can, we can solve that, we can give you a drug can change the sinopril with another medication which is exactly working like this in april instead that uh, sorry except that it doesn't lead to that cough okay so that's an example we solved the concern we solved the issue and the patient is encouraged to get back to his medication okay you have to explain the benefits of the treatment as we said and the consequences if you didn't take the sinopril uh what's going to happen that was just an example to make things clearer okay then deal with the issue of non-compliance, as I said here in the in four steps. This is how you deal with it. Address concerns and solve them. Then ask them if they have any concerns at this level. Now, many candidates ask me, when should we ask about the concerns? At the end, from the beginning, or at the start? My advice to you is that as long as your the inter interview is going on, okay, ask about if they have any concerns. Let's say, for example, I will stop here for a few seconds to ask if you have any questions or any concerns at this level so far. No, doctor, I don't have any questions, okay? So do you mind to continue? All right. And then you continue your explanation, your, your uh, interview. And then you ask about the concerns again, okay, uh, when uh, you are about to finish. So by that, you covered the uh, concern thing Okay, so it's just to avoid that you don't run out of time and you just found you find yourself that you did not ask the patient about his concerns and then you will lose the concern mark. So in order to uh, just make sure that you are asked about the concerns and made the examiners hearing that you are asking about the concerns, you can ask it here. I advise my uh, students to add, assess understanding from here, from the introduction when we ask the patients, would you please tell me what you know about, um, let's say, about MS so far? Uh, well, um, it's so and so, let them speak. And after that, you explain, uh, you give an explanation from your side. And then ask them, uh, okay, um, do you have any concerns so far at this level? Okay, um, well, if you allow me, I will explain to you. And then you go on by the rest of your explanation during your task. So this is just the tip okay for you just to make sure that you get the concern mark you ask about the concerns for, uh, before you do your task this step and then you do it again uh, uh, after explaining these steps okay doing your task so by that you just make sure that you you're not missing the concern mark one more thing is that if you ask about the concerns remember it's not enough to ask about their concerns you must solve the concern and that's the meaning of the candidate did not manage the patient's concern. It's about managing concerns, not assessing concerns, just asking and just not solving these problems, okay? You ask about the concerns to give a solution, all right? And then reassure, find solutions, explain the risks of non-compliance, address any social. So here again, another question, when should we ask about social questions in communication? Is it social history or not? Okay, some of you are confused 
between taking social or asking social questions? Is it a social history, taking history? Because you know, you're not allowed to take history in the communication station. You will be assessed for a history taking in station two. But in station four, it's also written sometimes in the card, if you, or if you visit the MRCP UK official website, you may find you will find exam previous exam samples there. So, um, or even in some books, it's going to be a sentence there that you're not allowed to take history. Okay, how am I supposed to ask about social questions? Well, it's not take it's not taking history. It's about asking social questions in communication, which means that you can ask the patient, "Would you please tell me how your disease is affecting your life?" And then clarify to the patient, how is it affecting your job? How is it affecting your family, your free time? How is it affecting, um, for example, whatever, he, I mean, he, how is it affecting the patient's life with, on different aspects? How is it affecting your pregnancy? Okay, how is it affecting your um, um, trials to get pregnant? Okay, so these are examples how it affects the patient's life. And then you deal with that when you deal with this issue, you will get the welfare mark too. You see, for example, a patient, I will give you an example, um, a patient who presented to the clinic with back pain. And this lady, when she had an MRI scan, it was found that this back pain is metastasis to the spinal cord. Okay, sorry, metastasis to, the, uh, to her vertebral column, all right? And then when you, you, you um, from addressing her history and everything, uh, this patient uh, had breast cancer 20 years back and she was treated and, and, and now it's back and she doesn't know until today it was discovered to be metastasis, just that it spread, all right? And when you, you break the bad news, okay, this is a different scenario. It's not something about uh, what I'm talking about today, but I have a point which I want to explain to you. When you ask her about, um, uh, the, um, sorry, when you explain the diagnosis and break the bad news to her and you explain to her your management plan, let's say you want to admit her and she needs to take radiotherapy sessions, okay, to reduce the pain she's feeling and so, is that, is, then you have to ask her, is that okay with you? Do you agree to be admitted and so? Are you accepting this treatment? She says, well, doctor, I would like to, but unfortunately I can't. So here, ask again. When a patient say no or can't or requesting something, ask why. She will say that, well, um, my husband uh, he has he had a stroke and uh, I am his only carer. He's bedridden, bedridden and I am his only carer. And um, if I came into hospital and if I agreed to be admitted, there's no one who's going to take care of me. So here, you solve her concern, her problem. Tell her that, if, first, first of all, ask her if there are any other family members who can take care of your husband while you are staying in hospital, okay? So she says no. Then tell her that we can solve that issue. We, can, we will contact the social services and they will help you with this concern regarding your husband. They will provide someone to take care of him while you are staying in the hospital. By that way, you will receive your treatment and you will be taken care of and, uh, as, as you should. And also, your husband will, will also get the appropriate care he needs. Okay, so by that, you ensure that the patient is get, receiving the, uh, her treatment and her husband too. Okay, that's an example. So you treated the patient with dignity, with respect, you, you asked her how this disease or diagnosis may affect her life. And she said that, uh, well, um, she cannot even be admitted because she was thinking of who is going to take care of her husband, for example. So here you, um, another example, a patient who was diagnosed with um, a disease which is making him unfit to drive. Okay, there, we have a lecture about fitness to drive in the course. All right, so and he's not fit to drive and you tell him that he cannot drive, he has epilepsy and he is a heavy good vehicle driver holding type two or group two license. And you tell him that he cannot drive anymore and he needs to inform the DVLA. And um, how, how will this affect your life? You'll say that, well, I will lose my only source of income and I am the breadwinner in the family. What's gonna happen to us? Okay, so that's 
another example how the disease is affecting this, the patient's life. Okay, so therefore it's important that you ask about the social questions in the scenario. Okay, social job, pregnancy, patient who is ha who have a chronic, uh, uh, for example, a lady. She has a chronic disease and she's taking methotrexate. She has rheumatoid arthritis and she's on methotrexate. So again, you have to uh, uh, ask, how, ask her if she, uh, when you explain the disease and um, if she's taking methotrexate or not, uh, ask her if she, if anyone explained to her about the uh, pregnancy while she, about pregnancy issues while she's taking methotrexate, okay? So uh, safety in pregnancy is very important to assess in a young lady, uh, who is in the reproductive age group, okay? Driving issues again, depression, because long-standing chronic diseases may lead to depression, okay? And respond to them. If they are feeling depressed, how do, I, do we assess depression? Depression. Ask them how they feel. If they are feeling, how, if they have any mood changes, any sleeping, uh, insomnia or oversleeping, okay? Uh, changes in their sleep pattern, uh, mood changes, uh, eating change in the eating habits, how do they feel? How do they see themselves? How do they see their lives, their future? Okay, if they feel uh, hopeless or useless, or if they tell you that, it means that they have depression. So here you can advise them that we can help you with that if you don't mind. Uh, I can uh, um, contact my colleague. He is a psychiatrist. He's a doctor who deals with uh, people who has who have similar problems like yours. Okay, he can treat, give you treatment and make you feel better. All right, don't forget in a chronic illness or non-compliance, especially patient, you are persuading a patient to take his drugs. Okay, uh, always uh, mention uh, uh, about alarming signs and symptoms if they develop and when they need to come to the hospital. Okay, uh, to the emergency department if they developed. Okay, so um, after that, you go back discuss your management plan, which is uh, a part of, this is because I want you not to forget these steps. So discuss your management plan is that we will, for example, polypharmacy is taking so many medications that why, that's why he's not taking his drugs. So discuss the management plan. Well, we can you know, change you on uh, another kind of tablets. So instead of taking 10 tablets, we can make them six or seven, which means that we can combine every two tablets or three tablets in one tablet, okay? So that's an issue, for example. So discuss any changes in the management plan you made, okay? Including, management plan includes, even if you're going to include uh, medication or surgery or physiotherapy or multidisciplinary team or occupational therapy or whatever, okay? Uh, for example, um, chemo, radio, uh, contacting social services, all that is within your, man your management plan. After this lecture tonight, please, I will post, I will share um, guidelines on what to say when you explain your management plan in, the, in any communication scenario. And it applies to, it's a general approach, as, as you, maybe you noticed that I usually post general approaches rather than specific scenarios, because um, you can use them for, for, um, for many scenarios, okay? So I will uh, um, post on the WhatsApp group and the uh, Telegram group, I will, post a general approach on what to say when you discuss your management plan, okay? If there is any vaccination required, any notification of disease, any, okay, that's all, uh, will be all in the post, which I will post to you, okay? It says if they have any expectations, how you, uh, how do they expect uh, you to help them? Uh, uh, for example, are you happy with this explanation today? Um, do you want me to add something? Or do you have any other questions? Okay, you have to say these words. Okay, the examiners are waiting for you to say these words. And while you go on with your consultation, ask them if they are following you, if it's making sense so far. Do you have any questions? Oh, okay. So, okay, every now and then, these are checkpoints. You have to fill your consultation and make sure that the patient is understanding and following you. And do you have any concerns at this point? And so on, okay, as you go from uh, uh, when you start till you finish. Uh, effect on life and provide support. This specifically effect on life and providing support. This is a very important point, and it's uh, very difficult to explain it all tonight. Okay, but um, usually um, this is sufficiently explained um, throughout the course lectures and throughout the um, practicing of the scenarios because it takes 
um, more time, extended time, just to uh, explain everything related to this, okay? But I just gave you a general explanation. Summarize with your suggested plan. Okay, either you summarize to the patient with your suggested plan or ask the patient to recap what he got from this discussion today, okay? Finally, end the consultation. When you end the consultation, you end it professionally by uh, uh, doing three things, three steps. Number one, you uh, end the first of all, you give the patient written information. You have to give them a package to think about, which is what you have said to him today, and also give them written information about the disease or the condition you have been discussing with him. In the form of what? In the form of pamphlets or leaflets or give them websites where to look for further information. It's important that you give the patient websites so that his search on the internet is going to be guided by the doctor's advice, okay? There is another lecture, which is the internet therapy. Patients sometimes, they are studying their disease, they're sitting in front of the computer screen and they're collecting whatever available information about, let's say, um, motor neuron disease or multiple sclerosis or Huntington's disease or whatever, the relevant and the non-relevant, okay? So you, as a doctor, you give them um, specific, uh, reliable, uh, links of websites where you can look further for his disease. So you can say that I will give you some written information today, this leaflet and pa or pamphlet or uh, websites where you can look further and, um, and if you have any further questions. Also, this is our contact detail of the, uh, of the clinic or the specialist nurse or you can contact us whenever you want. Okay, again, remember here, one of the means to minimize the non-compliance is giving contact detail to the member of the medical team in case of any queries, which can be very helpful. All right, after that, again here, uh, finally, uh, uh, give them another appointment if that's the case, or uh, if you are referring them to another clinic or to another doctor, just give them the, uh, an appointment to the uh, clinic where you are referring them or so on. It depends on the uh, scenario, okay? So that was the block for chronic illness and non-compliance. The chronic illness can be ulcerative colitis and explain the treatment with steroid, non-compliance with steroid. That, that's one of the very, very um, common scenarios that came in the previous diet as well, okay? It could be rheumat rheumatoid arthritis. It could be SLE. The patient uh, was diagnosed with systemic lupus erythematosus. Your task may be either to diagnose, uh, explain the diagnosis of SLE, okay, which is a different lecture with different approach, okay? And, uh, or it could be, for example, the patient is known to have SLE and now she uh, pre presented with non-compliance or meet the patient and address any related issues. So when you ask her what she knows about SLE, let her speak and then you explain the diagnosis of SLE, okay? Uh, um, and then after that, you ask her if she's taking any medications, that she, does she know what she's taking? Uh, is she taking her drugs? no doctor or yes or whatever. If it, the answer was no, ask why, and then explain the implication of her disease, diagnosis, and the implication of her treatments and the importance of taking them and what's gonna happen if she, or consequences if she doesn't take her drugs, okay? So this is one of the examples. Uh, after that, yes, three points of ending, okay? Um, just a second, uh, we have the doctor who's asking, can you repeat the three points of ending? Okay, you end the scenario, just a second here. I'll show you the slide, just a second. Here. Um, Okay, um, so. Um, just a second. Okay, um, I'm sharing screen with you now. Can you please let me know if you are able to see it?
Okay, can you see the screen? I shared the screen with you. Please confirm to me. Can you see the screen, doctors? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So again, just, yeah, just uh, here. That was what was written in the block. Okay, greet the patient, confirm patient's ID. This is a general approach, how to approach communication scenarios. Introduce yourself, tell the patient what your role is, establish rapport, set the agenda. Just to recap, assess understanding of the patient's condition, explore the patient's problem, tell them what they know, ask, ask them what they know about their diagnosis so far. Okay, address ideas, concerns. What do they expect the diagnosis is or what do they expect the results of the investigations are? And then go on by do your task again. Our lecture tonight is discussing non-compliance, okay? So that's what we are going to do. After that, again, this is the common steps again. All communication scenarios contains a plan of management, whatever the scenario was, okay? And then assess concerns and if they have any questions, ask if the information supplied or decisions taken affect their life in any way and offer help accordingly. So these are ways to provide help or support to the patient if they have any problems, like group therapy, okay, medical societies, any patient with a chronic disease, okay, just let them know, give them the contact details. So I have contact details for medical societies, it's celiac disease medical society. Okay, remember all diseases have a society. So just, just go on by saying a medical society of the disease given to you, all right? Uh, they will help you in your difficult times and they will be very supportive. These are the contact details, okay? I will provide them with you. Give it with information and the contact details of your, your uh, specialist nurse in the clinic and also contact details of the medical society, the social services if needed. Okay, it depends on what's mentioned in the scenario, all right? Uh, for example, you can join the um, Senia Gravis Society and see how people are coping with their condition, and they will support you in your difficult times, okay? For example, another way of providing help or support through another appointment to discuss new decisions about the patient's condition, depending on the scenario, okay? A patient who is not mobilizing freely, we can just provide walking aids that will help him. Support groups, specialist nurses. Specialist nurses are nurses which are special or who are specialized in a subspecialty. Here, Macmillan nurses are cancer nurses specialized in cancers. Cancer, okay. So, cancer scenarios. You can you say that uh, we'll give the, these are the contact details of Macmillan nurses. They will be also involved in, and they will um, help you. Nursing homes, okay. When do we use nursing homes in communication and ethics? Nursing homes are used when, um, let's, there's a difference between a residential home and a nursing home. A residential home is the place just to stay in for people who doesn't, don't have uh, a place to stay, okay? They stay in residential homes. And nursing homes are for people who, who need medical care, okay? They are like a residential home, but there are medical, uh, or let's say um, uh, medical provi health providers and pro providing them with care if they need a dressing or if they need uh, uh, continuous physiotherapy or continuous whatever medical care. Uh, there are, uh, uh, let's say in the lady, if you remember the lady with the back pain who had metastasis to the spine, okay? Uh, regarding her husband, uh, first of all, we, you have to ask if there are any relatives to take care of him while she is away in the hospital, okay? And then ask, tell her if no one is available, then tell her that we will contact the social services and they will take care of that, okay? One of the means the social services may take care of him, either to provide someone to stay with him or to uh, uh, invite him to the nursing home, keeping him in the nursing homes. They will take care of him while he's there because he needs medical attention, medical care, till his wife is outside, okay? Why did we ask about a family member? Because um, some advice, this is another tip, okay? When you ask if there is anyone of the family to take care of him, this is, some say don't abuse the social services, okay? If there is someone to take care of him from the family, then that's okay, all right? If not, then we will get uh, help of the social services, all right? After that, uh, the SALT team is also another way of helping the uh, patients, okay? 
So uh, the the, um, the uh, SALT uh, team, which is the speak and language therapy, okay, it's provided along uh, uh, by the occupational health, uh, the occupational therapist, okay. Uh, the occupational therapist will provide the speech and language therapy for patients with Parkinson's disease or difficulty swallowing, difficulty speaking, uh, patients with, with the multiple sclerosis, okay? Uh, for example, safe sex is also a, a one mean of providing help uh, for patients who have STD, for example, uh, HIV scenarios, rehabilitation programs, uh, we have, for example, uh, post-MI rehabilitation program, uh, post-epilepsy, um, post-heart uh, failure, okay, uh, physiotherapy, organ transplantation, social service, dietary advice, all these are ways to help uh, provide help and support and to include them in the management plan according to the given scenario, all right? Then summarize the whole scenario with your suggestion plan, close the consultation. This is the to, to answer the question, how to end the, the three steps, how to end the consultation. Okay, close the uh, consultation by offering contact details, follow up referral appointments, leaflets, pamphlets, website for further information. Okay, if you want to write them down, you can do that. I will leave the slide for a second. Okay. So again, I will get back to our lecture tonight, which is to practice the scenario. I need some one of you doctors who's interested to do the scenario. Please let me know. If anyone is interested, please let me know. Raise your hand or just inbox me. Okay, we have Dr. Honor. Dr. Raghab, your name is Dr. Raghab, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Dr. Raghab, yes. Okay. So, uh, just a second, I'll share the scenario with you. Here it is. New share. Okay, can you see the slide? Yes, I see it. All right. So you have you have five minutes to plan your scenario, your answer, and then we will start. Okay. Okay. Please, doctors, I want you to use the same approach and plan the scenario, okay? And then we will start all together. And if you have any questions or if the Dr. Raghav missed any points, then uh, uh, I want you just to add what you think uh, have been missed or um, so just to um, uh, uh, do, do it interactively, okay? And then finally, I will ask your, uh, answer your questions.
I can start. There is some background noise there. You need to check those background noise. Okay, Dr. Aghab, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, hello, Mr. Sam. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, I am Dr. Aghab, one of the doctors in the heart clinic today. Yes, nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, We are together today to discuss the issue with the health of the heart. Uh, is that okay with you? Dr. Aghab, your sound is not clear. Yes, okay. Yeah, I can't hear you properly. Uh, please, Dr. Nada, can you attend me, please? What? Yes, okay. Uh, it is clear now? Yeah, it's better, much better. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, we are together to, to discuss some issue related to the health of your heart. Uh, is that okay with you? Yeah, it's okay. Also, we can listen good. Uh, I can find We can't hear you at all. Much more. Okay, Dr. Anera, you yes. hear me well now? Yeah, I do. Uh, yes, uh, we are together to, to discuss some issue related to the, uh, the condition of your heart. Uh, is that okay with you? Yeah, it's okay. Yes, uh, before I proceed further, I would like to ask you, uh, how do you feel now, Mr. Sam? Well, um, I, I don't know, doctor. I feel that I'm probably dying. I mean, how do you expect me to feel? You see my condition, how, I'm, how I am doing. Yes, uh, I am sorry to hear that. Uh, I know that you are suffering and...
Yes. Yes, hello. 